everyone. I'm going to be introducing you to the Chromium Configurator, which is a tool made by MAME for Brotato to allow the implementation of configs to get injected into the game, basically. This means that even with a low level of programming knowledge, you can now make changes to the game and share them with your friends. So to begin, uh, you're going to need to go to the Steam Workshop and you're going to have to subscribe to the Chromium Configurator. Um, once you've done that, you're just going to launch Brotato and then there will be a <clears throat> bunch of directories loaded up in 2% app data percent. The reason it goes here is because this is the one place that uh, I believe most executables are allowed to read and write to. So, a little bit of knowledge and stuff there. So we copy this directory and... We put it here. Now we're already here, so this isn't going to change anything, but you can open up a file explorer and then paste that into that little bar and you will end up where you need to be. Once you are in here, you will see three directories. We have the vanilla directory, the modified directory, and the additions directory. Each one of these interacts with the JSON files slightly differently to do uh, different things. Uh, <laughs> that was such a non-statement, but the vanilla directory does nothing. It, uh, it gets written when you launch the game, and it gives you a basis of everything that you can do. So if you know that there's a character in the game that has a certain effect, well, you can go open up that JSON file and look at what that effect looks like, and then implement it into one of these two directories, which is where the actual changes are made. So in the modified directory, things in here, first of all, this directory is completely empty, but... When you put things in here, it will override the main vanilla game. This means that you would basically just copy a JSON file from here and you would drop it in there and then you would change around some values in there and you would be able to effectively create or not create, but change vanilla content. The additions file is if you don't want to change vanilla content, but you want to add something new to the game. And we're going to get into all of this in just a second. The first step to getting into the additions and modified file is to actually understand the JSON file structure. So we're going to start with something simple, like the well-rounded character. Everybody should have this guy unlocked. He is the first character in the game. So the well-rounded character, we're just taking a look at his JSON file here. You see he has a tier, a value. Uh, these two things don't matter. I, I don't believe they matter. <laughs> but they do exist in the serialized data. So I probably wouldn't touch these. However, we go down my ID and name. Uh, the name is just the uppercase version of the ID. This will matter more in a bit. Uh, translate, this applies to additions. So if you don't put a translate in, the game will display your ID or the name as opposed to what you actually want it to say. So it's very important to put a translate in when you're making additions to the game, or else it will look terrible. Or in this case, it will just put n slash a if you don't override it. The icon, once again, this uh, points to the additions. We don't have to worry about this yet. I'll explain how that works in a second. This is where the main Brotato modding learning curve is, the effects. Now you'll see this is an array because we have this little bracket here, meaning you can put multiple items in here. In this case, we have three items. Each of them are curly braces separated with a comma, except for the final one right here. So <clears throat> an effect is basically the, it, it's all the fancy things in Brotato. Um, whenever you see kind of like that flavor text that talks about like range damage getting converted to melee damage or uh, percent damage going up or speed for damage, anything like that, that is always an effect. And the effects, they're all different children of the effect class, meaning there's a lot of effects in Brotato. And when you look at them in JSON, they kind of all look the same. So it's very hard to differentiate if you don't have a base to work off of. That's why the vanilla directory exists. So if you know what something looks like in the game, you can find the JSON file in the vanilla directory and you can look at that effect or try to find it. And then you can be like, oh yeah, that's how this is created and then you can copy it and change it to your needs. So this is a pretty generic effect. Um, this is just adding a stat to a character. 
So we see we have the effect ID, which is just generic, and then we have the actual stat we're adding, and the amount of that stat is right here. The custom key and the text key have different functionalities depending on what exactly you're doing. Uh, we'll, we'll see that in a second when we actually go towards the uh, modified directory. So down here we have the wanted tags. This character is empty, but if we go to someone like Chunky, we know that Chunky's kind of a tank character, right? So his wanted tags are obviously going to be max HP and HP regen. What will happen is I believe this gets influenced into the shop. So when you're uh, rolling, you'll find items with these tags more often. And then uh, starting weapons, these are just the items that you can start the game with. Interestingly, if you really wanted to, you could um, switch out the one for something like a four, allowing you to start the game with a legendary weapon. So we'll show that in the next section here. So we take all of that and uh, we know how that works. So we're going to write a modified uh, directory JSON file. And we're going to do this by copying one of these characters. So we're going to copy the savior and we're going to go into modified. We're going to go into characters. We're going to paste that file. We open this up. So we can see right here we have our starting weapons. Let's say uh, I want the savior to be a little bit more powerful, so we'll allow him to start with legendary variants of all of his base weapons. And, um, for example, his effect here, the piggy bank, what if we wanted the savior to start with something like 1,000 black belts? So, this is where that custom key and text key thing comes in. You'll notice we're still just using a generic effect, but now we have a custom key and a text key. The starting item and the effect starting item. This will change the functionality when the effect gets loaded into the game to actually use this key to create the black belts on the character. It is a very convoluted system, but it works nicely. The value is the amount of that item that you want to add to the character. So we're going to get a thousand black belts in this case. And we'll see that in the game in a second. You'll notice that since we're doing a override here, the my ID and the name will remain the same. We're not going to touch these because they need to reference the same character that already exists in the game. And now we're going to launch Brotato. And when we do this, let's get this a little bit bigger. I was running into problems trying to keep this full screen earlier, it was still recording. You'll see the saver starts with a thousand black belts, and all of the items are now legendary. So we can click this and we start the game. Obviously, black belts inc increase your melee damage and XP gain. So just to prove that we made that work, boom, we just got five levels from one material. And there's the 1,000 black belts. <laughs> now let's quit out of here. So we're going to keep the saver here because we're about to make an addition to the game. Additions work slightly differently. There's a little bit more overhead, but... You know, it's all just trial and error at the end of the day. You'll probably get it eventually. You put some effort into it. So we go to additions. We go into the items directory because we just copied the item asset JSON file. And the, the name of the JSON file doesn't actually matter, but for the sake of consistency, we'll just call it item example. And as you can see, I got my nice little example image. It's just the alloy picture. And we're going to open that up. Now we actually have to type in some new information. If you keep these the same, the game is probably going to break. So my ID will now be item example, and we're going to confirm to the standard and name this item example in all caps. And the translate is going to be the ingot of destiny. And then we're going to say pull the example that PNG. And like I said, I would explain how this works. So the icon property right here uh, Darkly is getting back to me about some content loader stuff. Uh, the icon property right here is pulling the example PNG from this directory. 
Uh, you do not need to worry about the directory so long as the PNG is in the same directory as the JSON file. And as you can see, it is, so it'll all be good. The mod already takes care of all the directory management and all that, so I figured it would be nicer to implement this way because then everything's just packaged together and you don't need to have all the sep like subdirectories and <clears throat> keeping track of where everything is. We're having to learn GD script directories and all that. So basically, this just points to this. We don't need to type in any fancy stuff. <laughs> and then you'll notice we now have our effects. The initial item we had was giving a stat of max HP so of 8, so we'll change that to 10,000 for the sake of testing. We'll change this to 100. And then, like I said, we're going to keep the saver character in here so we could test this out. So the way the mod works is that items are loaded, or additions are loaded before overrides. Which means our item will exist in the game before the character is loaded, so nothing will break if we do this. So we can load our custom character, our custom item on to the saver as a little test here. So we're going to get 1,000 of it. So we open up Rotato. And we stretch it out again, just to make it a little bit more readable, hopefully. Press start. Saver. You start with 1,000, the ingot of destiny. As you can see, I think we actually broke the HP limit. <laughs> um, our dodge is at 100,000. And we have 1,000 of these ingots of destiny. It's a little extra information to go with that. These, uh, these pictures they use in the game, they need to be 96 by 96. If you make them any larger, they will escape the box when you hover over it. So that's just a little thing of note. But uh, as you can see, we just added a custom item in like, I don't know, a couple of minutes, a little bit of work there. And then if you wanted to share this with your friends, say you made like a really cool addition to the game, you could easily just copy all of this, zip it up and send it off to them. So then we can quit out of this. And then, uh, you know, right here, so we've just been working with effect IDs that are pretty generic, right? But you'll notice that the saver, he converts materials into percent damage. So here's an example of what that looks like. Gain stat for every stat, key, stat, percent damage, text key. All of these little pieces come together. Yeah, it, it, there's so much you can do with this. Once you start using the effects, you'll be able to kind of figure out how to all, like, all these numbers work together, and it will be a lot easier to quickly set things up. It just takes a little bit of practice. I do hope that this video assisted anybody trying to get started with the mod. I may release something that goes a little bit more in-depth about the effect IDs, the keys, and the custom keys and all that, the text keys and everything, but... For now, I think this is a good starting point for the mods creation, and I hope some people create some pretty cool things with it.